Now we're covering the story of Daniel Abed Khalif, uh, who this morning at 7.50 staged an extraordinary breakout. He escaped from Wandsworth Prison. Uh, he was working in the kitchen. He still thought to have his kitchen uniform on, a kind of a check shirt and his steel toe cap boots. Uh, he got out of the kitchen and attached himself underneath to some kind of delivery lorry, uh, which then drove out of the gates like something out of a movie. Uh, we were just talking to Met Police Detective Mike Neville. We've got another one in the studio now, another former uh, top cop, uh, who actually has, in his distinguished career, uh, many times uh, been on the uh, chase of escaped prisoners and indeed has nabbed some. So a warm welcome uh, to man of the moment, Peter Blexley. Hello, Peter. Good evening. Now, you've uh, you've uh, caught prisoners before. You've been tasked with finding them. Uh, what would you be doing right now to try to catch Daniel Abed Khalif? The best way for a fugitive to remain on the run is to have a network of people helping them. It's incredibly difficult. If this what appears to be relatively low-tech, audacious, perhaps spur-of-the-moment escape, means that from the early hours of this morning he was on his own, in order to remain on the run, that will have to change. Because, of course, he's going to need clothes, cash or access to funds, food, a roof over his head, all of those things. And for that, he's going to require help from people. <clears throat> so... The immediate place to look would be his network. And, of course, his network will have been investigated as part of the investigation into the crimes that he's been charged with and that he's awaiting trial for. So double-check the escape just to make sure it wasn't or he wasn't assisted by a network of criminal-minded people. If he's been audacious and done it on his own, then look at the network that they will undoubtedly already know quite a bit about. Uh, and uh, you were telling me off air that uh, you were once charged with uh, for trying to find uh, Scotland's most wanted man who escaped from prison. Uh, how did you catch him? Who was that? What happened? Many moons ago, James Alexander Bagery, Bagery committed an audacious escape from Scotland's most secure prison and the Scottish police had searched high and low for him. They found one scrap of paper in an associate's flat which had a London telephone number on it. Then the inquiry came down to us and to cut a very long story short we searched a bed sit apartment twin bedded bed sit apartment that had one bed empty i being the curious detective that i was looked at a van parked outside the address after we'd finished the search opened the back door to be confronted by bakery whose head popped up from beneath the blanket and he stuck a sawn off shotgun under my nose blimey extraordinary uh now uh, this guy khalif uh uh, I mean, he's charged with terrorist offences that he denies, uh, but uh, when you hear terrorism, you do fear there may be associates, there may be a network that helped him. Uh, I mean, if this was an opportunist escape, it was a very good one, and uh, you just wonder, I mean, it's not that easy to connect yourself to the underneath of a truck. Uh, this could have been quite organised, couldn't it? But this is a man with military background. Yeah, that's what's and worrying. And military yeah, training, yeah. which rings alarm bells on a number of levels. He may be, of course, very physically able and Six fit. Six foot two. He's guy. only 21. He's of slender build. So that might indicate that he's fit and perhaps looks after himself like he would undoubtedly have done so when he was in the army. What other skills did he learn in the army? Would he be able to disappear off into the heart of a forest and fend for himself and keep himself alive and well until such time as he could make contact with a network? All these possibilities will have to be considered. Well, right now, uh, you know, uh, Wandsworth Prison is in South London, so that'll be a hot area they'll be looking at. He's got connections in the Kingston area to the west of London, so they'll be looking at that. I assume uh, they'll be monitoring all airports, all stations. Uh, anything else they need to do? It's a pretty short hop down the A3 from Wandsworth to Kingston. Yeah. It's not very far at all. Um, of course, I have to mention that many people regard Wandsworth Prison as being unfit for purpose. It's a very it's old a Victorian building. Victorian hellhole, isn't it, it? it? It really is, and I know somebody who served time in there, and it really wasn't a very pleasant yeah, experience. Yeah, I did too. He, said, he, said, he, said, he was a, a nefarious <clears throat> character that I used to drink with, and he said, oh, you, you know... Uh, most most Nicks, they're all right, but don't get yourself locked up yeah. in Wandsworth. It's yeah. a hell of... But will there be... I mean, it's supposed to be a, a Category A prison. Uh, presumably there'll be big questions asked right right now. I know you've got to go in a minute, Peter, but just this last question about what went wrong here. 
Yes, of course. Any escape has to be investigated. There's been over 90 people escape from the prison estate in the last year alone, according to the latest figures. So clearly there are opportunities, unfortunately, for people that should be inside to actually manage to break out. And that's got to be a concern. A last quick warning uh, to the public. Be very careful with this guy. Do not approach this six foot two, slender build, 21 year old man. If you think you've seen him, pick up the phone, dial 999, but I repeat, do not approach this man. Listen to the man. That's Peter Blexley, former Met Police detective. Thank you very much, Peter.